Hello everyone, welcome to Fayette Regional's Health Talk. I'm Doug Fishesser. And I'm Charity Moore. Thanks for joining us. For those of you joining us for the first time, Health Talk is made possible by TV3 and Fayette Regional Health System. This is a chance for viewers in the Whitewater Valley to get a closer look each month at specific health and wellness topics that affect each of us every day. And Fayette Regional Health Talk is also your source for up-to-date health news and events that are important to Connersville, Fayette County, and the entire Whitewater Valley. Leading this edition of Health Talk is the introduction by Fayette Regional Health System of the new health care providers in our community. Dr. James Bronlin, internal medicine specialist, his office is located at 1908 North Park Road here in Connersville. Fayette Regional is proud to have Dr. James Bronlin on the staff at Internal Medicine Associates. Dr. Bronlin is a graduate of Notre Dame University and attended the University of Cincinnati Medical School. He brings over 23 years experience to the Whitewater Valley. Call 765-827-0876 to schedule an appointment. Dr. Dwayne Johnson has joined the staff as the newest pediatrician. He comes to us from Louisville, Kentucky and has had a private practice for nearly 20 years. We are grateful to have him join our team at the Pediatric Health Group alongside Dr. Chambers. You can call 765-827-8090 for an appointment. Dr. Miller, orthopedic surgeon, will join the Fayette Regional team in August. Dr. Miller comes to us from Boone, Iowa. His services include total joint cases, including hips, carpal tunnel hand surgeries, and deals with a lot of sports in injuries, including ACLs and shoulders. He has been board certified since 1988 and has been practicing for almost 30 years. We are very pleased to have Dr. Miller join our staff. To schedule an appointment with Dr. Miller, please call 765 825-4477. As part of Fayette Regional's continuing efforts in community outreach, we are providing monthly screenings and activities at several locations. On the first Wednesday of the month, Fayette Regional will be at the Fountain Place Apartments offering various activities and education. Staff will also be at Southview Courts in Union County providing blood pressure and blood sugar screenings. The second Tuesday of every month, Fayette Regional will offer blood pressure and blood sugar screenings at Brookville Senior Center. The third Monday of each month, activities and education will be offered at Southview Courts in Union County. Rounding out our regularly scheduled activities and screenings is the Connersville Senior Center the last Wednesday of the month. If you have a group or organization that would like Fayette Regional to provide screenings, education, and activities, please contact Charity at 827-8058 or Charity M at FayetteRegional.org. When we return, we will have Katrina Norris and Martha Bowman in the studio discussing Fayette Regional Care Pavilion.
Welcome back. Joining us today is Katrina Norris, team leader at the Fayette Regional Care Pavilion, and also Martha Bowman. She is the certified music and outpatient therapist. Welcome, Katrina and Martha. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Katrina, let's just go ahead and get started with you. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about your background and um, the role that you play at Fayette Regional's Care Pavilion? Well, I am the director of the Care Pavilion, and I manage the day-to-day -day operations for the child and adolescent inpatient unit as well as the outpatient clinic. Um, my background is in social work, and that's something I'm very passionate and proud of. I am an IU East graduate and IUPUI graduate, and I have been with the Care Pavilion for seven years. So I'm always excited to tell everyone that I started as an intern, and in seven years at the Care Pavilion, I have worked my way through the ranks to the Director of Operations. So, wow, what a, what a neat little path, a good success story there. Thank you. Um, you were recently nominated by a staff member, Jessica Whited, for Region 5 Social Worker of the Year. And it's my understanding that there are actually 11 counties in Indiana that this covers. Um, a couple of the bigger ones that we service are Fayette, Union, and Wayne. And not only were you nominated, but you won. Um, can you tell us what your reaction was and what that means to you? Well, I'm, I'm very honored. That's, that's a huge honor to win that and represent this region. Um, it was humbling for me as well because to hear your colleagues say you are an inspiration to me is it's very heartwarming. Um, it was exciting. We traveled to Muncie and received the award in front of my peers and it's quite the honor. Nice. Well, Sheila Armstead, she's the clinical assistant professor and director of field work at IUE School of Social Work. Um, she actually was quoted saying that you were a phenomenal therapist and a phenomenal individual. How do you respond to such a wonderful description? That again is, is heartwarming because I have so much respect and admiration for Sheila. She's one of my favorite people on the planet as a professor, as a person, as a colleague. So for her to, excuse me, publicly say those kind of things, it's, it's very heartwarming. It means a great deal. I bet. Well, let's talk about some of the uh, services that are offered over at the care pavilion. We offer inpatient services for children and adolescents 6 to 17 years old. We have an acute unit that is for stabilization for youth that are struggling with harming themselves, harming other people, potentially having suicidal ideations or even a suicide attempt or having homicidal ideations or homicidal attempts. So that program is highly structured. It's very controlled. It's very secure for obvious reasons. We want to keep them safe, give them the tools that they need for stability, and then ultimately get them the services that they need to be productive in their community, in their home, and in their schools. Okay. Well, what are some of the summertime activities um, that you do take the, the kids on? I hear a lot of, you know, things about the pool or I think Reds games or something. Can you maybe elaborate on that? The outings are specifically for the residential children, okay. and the residential program is long-term as opposed to short-term acute stays. Obviously, we can't take acute patients out into the community, but with the residential, because they're with us anywhere from three to nine months, one of the goals is always to reintegrate them into the community so that they can function once they are discharged and, and not be culture shocked, so to speak, when they're back in their home community. So, we do a lot of pool outings, we do hiking, we do state parks, um, museums are a big one because we want the educational component as well that they can learn while practicing their pro-social skills. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really exciting to get them out of a controlled environment or a hospital-like setting and see how their behaviors change amongst their peers, amongst adults, and amongst community members. Um, and of course they have to meet certain criteria, but we do a lot of great things. Last year we attended opening day at the Colts. Oh, awesome. Um, and that was courtesy of the charitable charitable donation of the Colts team and organization. So we're very grateful to the Indianapolis Colts for those kind of donations and block grants that they offer us. Um, we've been to Pacer games. We've been to the Indians games. We try to give our youth opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have mm -hmm. if they weren't with us because a lot of our families struggle mm -hmm. 
and a lot of our kids struggle. So the, these opportunities come to us and we like to go out with the kids. <laughs> so are most of your activities then sponsored by organizations that you're actually going to go see or is, is there funding internal? Is there grant opportunities? How, how are most of your, your activities funded then? Well, the answer is both. Okay. Obviously, we have charitable donations um, from the organizations that we go see, but then we also internally pay for things like the park pool, for example. We purchase passes from the Parks and Recreation Department for our youth so that they can go on a regular basis and start to develop even some relations with other kids in this community because in turn they're going to go to school with them as well and we want them to start building relationships, positive relationships, as well as supporting our, our local vendors. So if, if there was an organization in town or you know statewide, would they just need to reach out to you if they want to help maybe sponsor an event like that? Absolutely, that'd how be they great. Would? That's awesome. Um, I know that we had alluded to in the summer with our last segment about the spring into summer carnival. carnival. Do you want to maybe talk a little bit about that, how it went, how it was, you know, funded? What was all that about? The Spring into Summer Carnival was funded by the Children's Bureau. We had received a grant from the Children's Bureau to provide prevention and education in our community because this region has a substance abuse problem. And that was one of the things that they were really seeking were professionals and organizations to educate the people in our community about substance abuse and the dangers and, and not traditional just say no or dare programming, but really interactive, brain-based, evidence-based practices in the community. And we did a lot with that grant money. Um, I went to Connersville High School and I know that we met with all the freshmen in a day long process. Mm -hmm. We did every health class at the Connorsville Middle School. We went out to Franklin County. We went to Union County. Oh, wow. We touched a lot of youth in this area with this information because we were so grac graciously granted this grant from the Children's Bureau. And to round the grant cycle up, Martha had decided that we should have a carnival and awesome. I thought that was a great idea so herself and Kelly Beckham put together a great event 70 people came through in a two-hour window oh wow and not only did they get the substance abuse prevention education but they got the opportunity to interact and do music and do art and um, practice some other pro-social skills we had a bounce house it was great they had to take turns and all those things we try to teach our kids before they enter school. And, and DUI goggles? Yes. Like to experience what it was like to be inebriated. Mm -hmm. Oh, to do, okay. Try to throw a cornhole. Nice. So what are some of the other activities that you had set up for the kids? Or what, it face was painting. It was all, all open up to the public, right? It was, indeed. Okay. We, we, uh, we mailed out invitations to 500 people in town and we had people come through do an assessment yes. um, they we gave them information about all of our outpatient services and then we had face painting we had music we get we fed them lunch and uh, yeah we had a it was a, it was a nice day we, we were really pleased we, our goal was to have 50 to touch 50 people's lives and, and experience you know so they could know what how they're impacted by substance abuse mm -hmm. and we got 70 so we were really pleased with that That's awesome we also gave away great door prizes. Yes, we did. Um, okay. We two had. bikes, candles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, where did the door prizes come from? Did, did someone in the community donate them? Were those purchased? Both. both. <laughs> Again, both. I, well, and it takes mm -hmm. a village. You know, I always say that in in so many avenues, even with my own kids, that it we all just can't do it by ourselves. It does take an entire. Warm Glow community. Candle Company donated several beautiful, mm -hmm. packaged up candles and gifts. That was really nice. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Gilman's also Gilman's gave us a nice gave, donation. Gilman's gave us a gift card, and mm -hmm. I donated some of my books and CDs. That was we had a lot. We had a lot of prizes. We sure good. did. Very nice. Yeah. Um, also, my notes indicate that we um, or that you guys, I guess, had a playground equipment drive. Do you want to share mm -hmm. some information about that? Sure. We wanted to purchase playground equipment to keep on site for our youth because. Play is so important to child development, and so much therapy is done with play. 
traditional talk therapy is not going to work with a seven-year-old. Right. They're not going to be able to sit down and, and do traditional talk therapy like you and I are doing. So we started this if, like, drive to get funding for our own playground equipment on site and the United Way of Fayette County has awarded us a $4,000 amount towards our playground equipment, which is wonderful and we're very, very grateful to the United Way. Um, we have also have some funds left over from the Children's Bureau and after we get all of that done and wrapped up, we'll see what's there um, that we can utilize for our playground equipment. Um, of course, it has to be commercial grade, which is a little bit more expensive right. than, than what you could purchase it at Lowe's or Kmart or something like that. Right. Um, but we are working towards that and our goal is to have that by the fall. Okay. So that's something exciting that we could utilize in the community with our kids, have them there. They can play on site. If Martha has a client she wants to take outside because sometimes the office is not the most comfortable spot to talk about personal issues, they could go swing. Mm -hmm. They could talk outside. Mm -hmm. And that's far more comfortable to a child than an office. I'm sure that it is. So. <laughs> okay. Well, lastly, um, I know that Doug and I have talked about the gala and some of the um, the fundraising efforts there. And I know this year we tried something a little different by um, trying to get the community to purchase equipment for the care pavilion. Do you want to maybe talk about that, wrap that whole thing up for us? We were so blessed by the participants of the gala, and it was so wonderful. The the outpouring of support for the care pavilion, for the youth we serve. Um, I, I talked personally to so many people and I got so excited and, and just telling them about what we do and the impact that we have on children. And, and in turn, they were, they were very generous. We were able to purchase 12 yoga mats. We were able to purchase uh, craft supplies for our kids. We purchased six beanbag chairs which the, our autistic population love the beanbag chair so nice. it was, again it's <laughs> such a blessing and, and we have so much gratitude to the community and the participants of the gala um, we also were able to purchase some room furnishings that we oh. really needed um, one of which was just installed last week so we we're okay. excited to have a secured um, cabinet armoire for our TV and our video game systems. And it's, it's a safety feature because everything's encased and there's no cords hanging out, there's no risk for the children. And when you have to purchase these commercial grade for private secure mm -hmm. units, they're very, very expensive. So it was exciting to see that all come together and have that uh, asset for our youth. Awesome. Well, Martha, let's get talking with you for a little <laughs> bit here. Um, Katrina had mentioned many of the inpatient services, and I know we are going to roll some footage here in just a few moments about some on-site visits that we've done with you. But real quick, would you like to go ahead and maybe tell the viewing audience a little bit about you, about your background, before we roll that clip? Sure, sure. Um, I'm a licensed mental health counselor okay. and a licensed clinical addictions counselor and a board-certified music therapist. I'm one of four counselors in our outpatient um, unit where we, we provide services basically for all ages um, once they're you know, verbal five or five or six, and all the way up to, you know, the the geriatric population. Um, we have group counseling, we have individual counseling, we have family counseling. We do whatever we can in a variety of ways to serve as many people as we can. So we have, and we have some really nice programming as far as um, our groups. We, we're working on a parenting group, um, helping parents. Um, be more proactive, you know, less disciplinary and more nurturing, those kind of things. Um, we have a self-care group coming up for people in the giving profession who need to understand that they need to give back to themselves as well so they can be better providers. And then we have a group called Coffee and Canvas for um, adolescents to learn different coping skills in incorporating music and art and decaf coffee. <laughs> And lots of creamer. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we just take a short break and we'll go ahead and get that film rolling, okay? Sounds good. All right. So we're just, I'm just going to sing and you guys are going to play. Got it? Oh, one, two, three. Music therapy is an evidence-based practice. It's based on a lot of research, years of research. Um, it is music interventions 
that are kind of proven through research to provide certain outcomes, um, both physical and mental and emotional. All of those things are included in music therapy. It takes some work to be a, a certified music therapist. Um, first of all, you have to be a musician. So we can't have non-musicians. I mean, it sounds silly to say that, but people are like, you know, I, yeah, I'll be a music therapist, but I can't keep a rhythm and I can't carry a tune and I can't play an instrument. So to be a music therapist, you have to be um, able to sing and you have to be proficient on guitar, which is why I learned to play guitar so that I could be a music therapist. Um, you have to have either a bachelor's degree in music therapy or for me, I had a bachelor's in music and journalism and then a master's in counseling. So I got what's called a, a certification. I took another 30 hours at IUPUI in Indianapolis and um, got through all the coursework, which was actually pretty stringent. There was a lot of work, like music and psychology and uh, palliative care and lots of training because there's a lot of music therapy in the hospital settings. Um, not in this region. There's not a lot of music therapy around in this region, but it is very valuable in, for example, hospice or doing physical therapy with children. They might not respond to somebody directing them to do something, but you sing something to them and they instantly open up. Um, so it takes some work, um, but I became board certified last summer. And so I've been a board certified music therapist for a year and a music musician for a lot of years, my whole life. We have a, a group called um, Coffee and Canvas, and it's for teens, and we incorporate art interventions. I don't technically call it art therapy because I'm not an art therapist, but we incorporate art into it. We were trained that as music therapists too, that I, I can't train other people to do music therapy, but they can do, I train other people to do music interventions. So I do art interventions with music, which is a beautiful blend of of artistic expression so in an, in an environment like this um, we you know we make it clear that what's what what happens in our group stays in our group so it makes it a very safe place and they can express how they feel and they can express it through canvas and paint um, we do music um, through it too we either listen to music or we create music sometimes it's drumming sometimes it's songwriting sometimes it's lyric analysis which is where Sometimes it's client-directed music. They pick a song that really speaks to them and we listen to it and we have the words in front of us and we take notes about it and we pick it apart. What does this mean? Why does that impact you? What is it? And sometimes it's, they don't even know it, but the, the intervals of, of the notes convey a certain message. It's very, it's very subconscious. But when you talk about it and listen to it and listen to it again and then process through it. So lyric analysis is one way we do it. We also do um, guided imagery with music. And I've recorded um, four of these on a CD. It's a, it's a long, about usually seven to nine minutes long. And my voice is on there too, guiding them through somewhere very relaxing and very safe. And then um, they experience a lot of times some healing. Two of them are for physical healing. One is for self-esteem and one is for depression. In the depression one, for example, the image is a light. So that can represent whatever they feel spiritually or in the universe, you know, because we don't usually say God, but you know, for people, they, they substitute whatever they want. The light is softening their heart and holding their heart and honoring that space. And so in the, in the, in them, while they have their eyes closed and they're just listening to this very relaxing music and cedar flute, they're experiencing a little bit of healing internally. Then the music keeps playing, just the instrumental part, and we have a blank piece of paper except for a black circle. And then they take oil pastels or pens or whatever and they just draw what they experienced. So they've already heard it and experienced internally and the paper, the mandala, is what it's called, is a way of processing that the rest of the way through. And um, then to complete the group experience, we would share what we experienced, what we drew, whatever, whatever they would want to share. So they've processed it like four times in one experience. It's pretty powerful. I've done it individually and I've done it in group. And even individually, it's very powerful because they just sit there and they're in their own thoughts and they're processing with colors. And then, of course, we can analyze it certain colors kind of represent certain things and certain shapes and certain ways of the dynamics of the paper. It's fascinating. I love it. Absolutely. 
I like the variety, but um, most of what I like is that I get to create music every single day for my job. Uh, that is a blessing beyond measure. To be able to go to a group of Jerry Psych patients, for example, and bring them music and decrease their depression, decrease their anxiety, get them engaged in a group setting is, is amazing. And then on the opposite spectrum to work with children ages 7 to 17 and engage them musically. Um, I know that on the Jerry Psych and on the, on the um, adolescent acute side they've said that's, that's what they look forward to because it's music. There is not one culture in the world that doesn't have music. It speaks universally to people. Um, and I read just recently that music activates almost every part of the brain. So when you think about people with dementia, they don't know maybe a wife or husband's name, but they remember, my Bonnie lies over the, and they know to say ocean, and they sing it. Um, when you have the Jerry Psych patients who are lethargic, they're not alert, they're not engaged, they hear music and something wakes up in them. It's amazing. I mean, it's really, it's, it's almost undescribable when you can make an impact on people like that with music. So Friday, July 11th at 2 p.m. at Brian's um, Bookstore and Coffee Bar, um, we'll have a musical story time and um, probably we'll have maybe some drums. I don't know, we'll do some, it's fun. It's very engaged, so kids will be able to learn. And when adults are there too, they pick up the messages of, of my musical life lessons because they're for everybody. They're really for all ages. <laughs> Good job, nice little solo there. Regional is proud to welcome Dr. Amy Wynn to our Healthy Women OBGYN staff of physicians. Joining Dr. John Landry, she will be providing outstanding OBGYN services to the women of Fayette County and the Whitewater Valley. Visit their offices at 3542 Western Avenue or give them a call at 765-825-0538 to set up an appointment. Great care is right here at Fayette Regional. And that's all the time we have today. We look forward to everyone joining us again next time on Fayette Regional's Health Talk. I'm Doug Fishesser. And I'm Charity Moore. Stay healthy, Connorsville.